Yeah, there we go, there we go. Uh, well, we're going to start it up again here. Uh, the, the, uh, the lunch crowd has taken prisoner or something, so we're going to continue anyway. <laughs> For the watch the video. We're still here. They can watch the video. Lazy me. We'll get back on time. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little presentation. Uh, please, please bear with, with me as I uh, find the right buttons yet again. <laughs> I'm finding them. There we go. Okay. I'm going to present share screen. This one. Share. We're seeing the screen, Steve. We're seeing the screen, I hear. Good, good, good. Make sure you can see it this time. You're getting better at this, yeah. <laughs> so I did a, I did a little uh, presentation about the current state of multi-core and all that good stuff about exec SG. Um, I did not include another blurb about what ex exec SG is because I've been doing that every year since it started and I got bored of saying it, but um, maybe just a tiny summary of what exec SG is. Is that the browser, Steve? No, no, Jerry, it's not the browser. It is the kernel <laughs> for the operating system. So this uh, this is the exact library. Uh, uh, it's a recipe for fried chicken. No, no, it is not a recipe for fried chicken. Man, these, this is a tough crowd. Uh, it's got exact library, utility library, and a bunch of other libraries all mushed together. Um, oh, morning kernel jokes. <laughs> At least no one mentioned corn yet. Uh, <laughs> and uh, multi-core is our attempt to add multi-core into the kernel, right? Because I don't know if you noticed, but most computers have more than one core or more than one CPU now. Only fake computers. And uh, that's because physics sucks. <laughs> <laughs> We we ran out of we ran out of nanos. So uh, <laughs> I, I I've seen uh, reports uh, in the news that they they gotten the uh, interconnect so small that uh, electron can't pass through. It's like oh dear, <laughs> we reached the limit. So uh, we had to add multiple cores because we just ran out. <laughs> Unless we invent magic or something. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> So every computer chip that I've seen, even I even had um, a PIC chip that was multi-core. Had two cores in it. A, a PIC is like you know three dollar, sixteen bit thing that goes in an embedded device, and it had two cores. Like, oh my gosh! <laughs> so uh, it, for those, maybe I should just say what a core is. You, you take the uh, the circuitry of your CPU and you duplicate like 90% of it and that's a core. So you take 90 sub percent of the circuitry and make two of them and maybe three of them, four of them, five of them and then you interconnect them all. That's the part that is a duplicate. Uh, yeah, and that's really all the cores are. There's no magic. <laughs> it's quite boring actually. Um, so what, we, what I decided, I won't say we because I was given a decision I decided to target the X5000, the E1222, and the X1000 because they're the only CPUs that have more than one core. But I wanted to um, wanted to make sure there were as few changes to existing programs as possible. No changes to the API if we can pull it off initially. And it's backward compatible as reasonably can hope for. And, um, then we we uh, we took we hired Thomas and let him loose, and, <laughs> and he implemented it, and it didn't work, and then he implemented it again, and it didn't really work, and then the third time, <laughs> I don't know what iteration we're on now, but um, uh, it's tricky, it's tricky, and it's tricky because we didn't break everything. That's why it's tricky. It's easier 
to do the uh, do the kind of the Apple approach, where you say, forget it, we're writing and we're using a brand new core, and we're going to emulate everything, and everyone will buy new hardware, and that, the world would be a better place. Sure, would like that, right? Now, certain people like that approach, especially the people selling hardware. Uh, the users, not so much. But <laughs> if you have that kind of power, which, uh, which Apple seems to wield, I don't know how they do it. They did it twice. Ah. You think once was a trick. They're doing it again with ARM. And they're following again. They're following again. They're buying all new stuff again. Like the, the fans, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not that much of an Apple fan. I have some Apple. No, I'm not throwing away everything, starting over again. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so we, we tried this different approach. I thought maybe it would be simpler in some ways, but eh, it turned out to be it was more complicated than it needed to be. And another problem is we couldn't really get anyone full time on it. So we're, we've got a part timer working on it. So that's never, a, never an ideal scenario. Um, so I, I guess I was going to say the X5000, I decided that's our target. Get it working on there first. And only that. And don't work on any other platform. Because I don't know if you work with programmers, but they tend to try to do everything perfect and generic. And sometimes that means it will never get done. <laughs> Whereas I'm, I'm more practical in my age. And I realized, uh, no, no, get it working, then make it better. <laughs> I'm, I'm more of a kind of, that kind of approach kind of philosophy now. Uh, I, I've named the kernels kernel MC and kernel MC debug, because putting the MC on the front sounded like McDonald's, so I didn't want to do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> the the kernel. kernel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We have these two kernels. They've been out for like a year, year and a half, since last year. Got a little team together. They've been trying their best, but development's been a little too slow. So they got bored. So I, I'm trying to help out a, a lot more recently to, to help um, kickstart things back again. And uh, there's been utilities popped out like task list and stuff that the general public doesn't know anything about yet. It, it, it gives you a list of tasks and tells you what core it's running on. Just simple little thingies like that. So it's plotted, right? Um, requirements. Okay, let's say you want to run this right now, right? All right for you. First off, you need a new U-boot. Why do you need a new U-boot, you may ask? Well, because there's this command in U-boot like you actually, you don't need a new U-boot at all, really. But U-boot will spin up all the cores for you and make sure they work. Right? Won't do anything with them, but it'll spin them up. And uh, one thing we needed was we needed to change our boot A command. It's called Buddha. <laughs> <laughs> you like these names? <laughs> Buddha, boot A, Buddha. Uh, the boot A command had to say, hey. There's more than one core, and here's the address of it, and here's what it's capable of, right? And it passes it on to a program <laughs> called Amiga Boot. Amiga Boots are bootloaders, which means it, it loads up the uh, kernel and jumps into it. Uh, so it loads all the files. Um, it, it takes that information from boot A. Now, boot A is a part of U boot, right? it's just a command in U, in U boot. One command of many. Um, I think boot, just with no letter on the end, is for uh, Linux. Yeah, yeah, we just made it A instead of changing it to boot L. Yeah, um, so <coughs> all it does is Amiga boot takes the CPU info that was passed to it from boot A and gives it to the kernel. That's it. That's all it does. That's the only addition, really. We had to make to Amiga Boot. 
and needs a new version. Then, then there's this other program that's kind of hidden called Loader, right? And Loader takes your your binaries from uh, the SD card and loads them into RAM. That's all it does. That's why it's called Loader. Good name, hey? <laughs> well, for reasons I do not understand, we needed this EDDR24 support for the multi-core terminal. And so the loader needed a change to load that particular type of, uh, what is it called, section? Module, whatever it's called. Uh, anyway, they, we had to have that, so Tom just added it in. So now, so what happens is you boot, you hit boot A, do to do, Amiga boot goes, finds loader, takes loader, executes it, loads all the files, and it goes to the next step. Uh, so now your kernel's running. Fine, you're happy. No, no you're not. The operating system has bugs in it. The shell command had a, 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 what we call a hanging forbid, or disable, where it calls that forbid and it never calls permit, or calls disable and never calls enable, ever. So that, of course, hangs your core. Now, you might go, OK, well, how did this work before? Well, because there's a, there's a timeout that would kick it off. There's a workaround in there. It'll kick it anyway, right? Kick it back, and the system would come back running again. <coughs> yes, question? In shell or kernel? In shell. In it would shell. watch for its own hang, and then it would kick it back. Oh, no, the, the kernel just does the kicking. When was yeah. that checked in? When, when did that exist? Oh, it's a, that, that, is that, bug, exact? that bug existed in shell for yeah. decades. Yeah, is that OS3 legacy or is it an OS4 legacy? That's a good question. I didn't go back and see if it's from 3. It probably is from 3. <laughs> this, is, this is based on 3 code. It's a good question. Yeah, but why, why do you have <laughs> So this bug appeared when the multicore started up and had to fix it. So, okay, got that. Then DOS library directly poking and peeking at a flag that shouldn't have to be you know, poking and peeking. Typical. But this, was, but this is our fault because the Amigo S team is the only one that knows that this extra flag field exists. So if somebody took a shortcut one, Nick. There you go. When you say you mean the original. No, this is the OS4 rewrite. Oh. Yeah. So. Somebody. I'm not going to point fingers. <laughs> <laughs> Are they in the room? No. I'm not going to point fingers. I didn't, I didn't ask you to point. I just asked her if they were in the room. Holy, here's the question. <laughs> oh. Anyway, moving on. Uh, <laughs> Notice he didn't say no. Rexis library <laughs> had a bug in it. It was clobbering a private variable again. Now, Rexis lib. Library is from when Commodore stole Rex from uh, oh, yeah. what's his name? William. William. Yeah. Yep. Pause. Pause. Yep. Yep. It was in there that long, way back, <laughs> and it appeared as soon as we started moving stuff around from um, L flavor. That's our, our another loader. Basically, it needed the ADR24. Support as well. That's, that's not a point. Timer device. That was it. That's a weird, weird, weird thing. Mm -hmm. So there's this thing called timer device. That's how you get time periods in Amigo OS. This is the very beginning of time. Uh -huh. And uh, for some reason, it would poke into the kernel. It still does. It pokes into the kernel. And the kernel talks back to the timer device. What is going on? Because <laughs> normally a kernel is the bottom layer, right? All your dependencies go into the kernel. This is when they go out one place. The whole thing that goes out. Nice. Yeah. One place. One place. Then it interrupts service routine. It's like, what is this? It's still there today. It's still there. It's still there. So we had to modify it. Does it still do that then? Still doesn't. Still doesn't. I, I have not looked into fixing it and decoupling that. I guess you know that's why, why it's doing it? No. A 
call yeah. out. Yeah. Out, yeah. The call out. Yeah. So timer device and the kernel have this dance. Yeah. Yeah, very odd. The hardest thing I've ever seen. Um, whatever. Workbench library. It has bugs in it. There's this run tool from multi-core again. Petunia. That's our um, 68K just in time uh, runtime emulation. Turns out it peaked in a private variable. And I don't know if I told my team to disable Petunia lately. I did not. Uh, <laughs> I have to really tell them, turn it off. <laughs> it will help slightly. Uh, <laughs> it will help slightly. So we haven't fixed that peak yet because Petunia is 100% assembly language. RPC is I, I know where the area is. <laughs> I'm like, I, I'm not that great at assembly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to get in there and. <laughs> where's Dan? Where's, where's Dan? Yeah. 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 So there's a little quirk in there I haven't fixed yet. Do you have um, anybody on the executive that does know PPC assembly well? Thomas. Thomas. Of course. He knows it very well. <laughs> I always ask him questions all the time. What's this dot L mean? What's this hash thing mean? Do you frustrate her? Oh yeah. I <laughs> mean. Uh, and of course, the, the kernel itself. Uh, I just wanted to point out the last kernel built was uh, October 6th. I really tried to make it work for the show. <laughs> I tried. I tried so hard. I could not get it stable enough. I, I, could, I could actually show you how it runs on this machine for as long as it runs. <laughs> Sometimes I get a minute. Sometimes you get three seconds. Depends. Anyway. <laughs> I don't know. <okay. laughs> so, implementation details. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Wait, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> yeah, well, they're right there. There's five points, as you can see. Moving on. Debugging. <laughs> yes, question. What the devil was that? <laughs> 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 and might I add, what kind of programmer are you to put the date sort in that order instead of the standard ISO order of year, month, day? It's oh, there, ridiculous. there's what a comment you? about the date uh, ordering. Yeah, what is wrong with you? Why would you possibly do that? What kind of dev are that's, you? That's, that's a very good question. What, uh -huh. what kind of... Freak are you? We'll put the date in that order. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Four digit year, then two digit month, then but two digit date. I'm day. going to blame some European, because that's what you do in America. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> somebody over there put it in that order, and we've been doing it in all of our release notes ever since. <laughs> oh. In our date stamps. I don't know. Maybe Westchester did it. Somebody did it. It could have been over here. See, you force yourself into the fact I don't that know. the yeah. only way you can disambiguate is that the only time you can date snap is when it is the 13th of the month or beyond. Yeah. You've just done that. Yeah, yourself. I know. I know. It, it always has been. Well, this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable. <laughs> I wonder, that'd be, a, that'd be an interesting uh, mega trivia thing, actually. Who picked the date format? Oh, we've got a comment here on the... For our version stream. The, chat, the day changes quicker than the month, the month changes quicker than the year. Now the excuse is starting. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call that. <laughs> I, I've heard this from other devs before, in other teams. <laughs> and I said, no, no, you're just lazy. <laughs> Alright, continue. I did not yeah, anyway, sorry. Uh, I didn't yeah, we're on date right stamps. Now. We're going to discuss uh, VI versus Emacs next. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> and why spaces are better than tabs. What? And, uh, <laughs> you're dead to me. 
Cavs rule. Wait, and how many spaces? Four, <laughs> one, three, five. Exactly. You just, you five. Just, five. Yeah, but I actually heard, just to put a pin in the date thing, I prefer the ISO format. <laughs> Year. Yeah, man. <laughs> Especially if, if, if you're in the uh, business of IT <coughs> or lo log parsing. Log parsing. Yeah. 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 Anyone's been up at 3 a.m. Yeah. Trying to fix a computer and yeah. some idiot put the tape in the room. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. I, prefer, I prefer a month, day, year because it torments Stephen. Oh. Yeah. You. There's always an architect ruining everything. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> how, did, how did we debug this thing? Well, here's what I do. Okay, so I build, uh, usually 90% of the time I use Docker to build it because it's just fast. I can throw it at a 16-core monster thing, out pops a kernel, right? But it also builds natively. I can build it native on the Amiga OS. It's not like I have to use the kernel. I just want it done quickly. <laughs> and when I'm talking quickly, I can feed it to AWS, get it down, and by the time the Amiga one is halfway done. <laughs> anyway, uh, then you load it on your target, however you do it. Um, that's, that's why I asked George a question last uh, session. How does he move his binaries and files, right? Everybody has their trick. I've been using USB. It's sucky. So I'm thinking, maybe we should use Ethernet. And I thought, oh, but I don't have an FTP server. Like, Wait a minute, didn't someone write one recently? Huh. Yeah. It's a, it's a little pricey, but it's very good. Zeta FTP? Zeta FTP. Yeah. yeah. So if I put that FTP server and uh, have it ready, I can push to it. Can you do a TFTP boot from loader? Can you pull the entire kernel off of a. Uh, the TFT boot thing. Yes. Yes, you're right. That, right. That, that, that might be, in hindsight, that's probably even better for, for the development cycle that I'm in. Yeah. Because I've got to try, i got to remove one line of code, test it. i got to put the line back in, test it. That's what I've been doing. It's, got, it's gotten this bad. Okay. So <laughs> I put an extra semicolon on. Did it work? Oh, darn. <laughs> yeah, it's easy. Yeah, I use TFTP boot, TFT boot from uh has got lots of these really awesome ways of loading binaries <coughs> that you probably never knew of existed. It's got tons of ways, great ways to load things. You can load it from a hard drive, you can load it from a car, you can load it from an EEPROM, uh, Ethernet port, a USB, Bluetooth. Whatever. <laughs> but not in the Oh no, it's, are, are you boots a little older? But it's got all the usual stuff. Harold, yes, it is. Yeah. But uh, that's, I'm thinking that, yeah, i got to get a, a faster cycle. Because the USB is annoying. Uh, then you collect your output, and 99 pretty much of the time you use serial port. But sometimes, uh, you need to know something more fine-grained, and then I whip out the uh, the oscilloscope, put it on a pin, where there's a LED in here, click, click a GPIO pin, right? Because things get so fast that human can't possibly uh, catch it in time, so you throw it on a pin. That's a common trick before you break out the logic analyzer and really get dirty, but. <laughs> Yeah, I don't want to go there. <laughs> no, no, and I don't have a logic analyzer. Anyone does fairly? <laughs> Anyone? Anyone? Well, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> yeah, they're they're cheap, right? You got three? <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then repeat. But we did we did manage to get a JTAG debugger. Um, Thomas has it right now and you can hold inspect cores and do all that uh, wonderful stuff. Mm -hmm. But the problem I'm working on uh, at the moment is so nasty, it dies before the JTAG can get in. 
So we can't even catch it before the jade head. And so we can't catch it mid flight. So boom, it's gone already. What? What? <laughs> so that's why I was uh, nagging, um, nagging Aeon for uh, access to the hardware designer. Because <laughs> something out of my control <laughs> is making this thing reboot. It doesn't seem to be part of the CPU, right? So I'm going to continue nagging, I think. <laughs> it's, it's just, what the? <laughs> so these, these kind of problems really uh, put a hamper on uh, multi-core, <laughs> to say the least. Um, one, actually, I, I guess I said one good thing about it is I've been able to create that problem using uh, the second core. I got a two-core machine. I use the second core. I, uh, I hang an interrupt or something, and I can make the machine power down. Uh, what the? <laughs> so I can cause it. So that's a good hint, right? That's a good hint. So something interrupt B, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> is there is there a multi-core engine for QEMU? You could QEMU? No, it's not useless for this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's, it's so it's orders of magnitude slower. <laughs> well, it's fine, but the problem you've got is it crashes too fast. No, it's the hardware though. I know. Yeah, it's not. But it's, it's not the emulation. No, it's no, no. Never done. <coughs> but you can't. Wouldn't cause the crash in the emulation. No, no. This is a this is a time. It would probably work. Yeah, it actually might work. Good point. Uh, usually in an emulator, your bugs are hidden, and it'll just run. Yeah. Problem solved. Okay, there we go. But I don't think we have a multi-core PC engine, or, or a target platform. Or no, no, we haven't. Not yet. No, not yet. Not yet. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so uh, that's, that's what I've been up to. Current status, like, Say it runs for a while, show stopper, power down, or reset. That's that's what I was just describing. But it does pop up, it does run cores, and it just dives off a cliff. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, along the way, I have fixed uh, several several uh, problems that would have made things worse. But I didn't find the problem, which is what I was hoping for. Because once you find the power down reset problem, whatever this is, uh, we have a way better chance to know the JPEG and this thing, da 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 da, right? But uh, yeah, Thomas kind of threw up his hands, and I'm, I'm like, I don't know either, man. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> we got to nail this one. We do know it's not a hardware problem, in case there's any rumors, because Linux is fine. I've combed the, the Linux source code looking for a comment that says, by the way, the core will reset if you don't do this. <laughs> <laughs> what? Because <laughs> sometimes that, that's what you find in open source, is a, a guy will leave behind a little note, by the way, you're going to kill yourself if you don't do this. <laughs> I have enjoyed ChatGPT. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, ChatGPT. <laughs> I have not asked it <laughs> So I have X5000. Well, first you have to put all the source code in your notes. <laughs> oh, mercy. So uh, I wanted to also mention, so that's the kind of bad news. Good news. Performance monitor. We just had a commit. And uh, from, I, I don't know how I'm saying that name. Atheus? Atheus. 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 Okay. Thank you. Uh, he has been busy again. He's a performance monitor expert fellow. He loves that stuff. Um, and he, he's got it working on those three platforms again, or more. <laughs> and uh, the next step after that, because I don't know, if, you know how this usually works, is you have to make a, an API in Amiga land, or resource we should call it to give access to the peripherals inside the chip, right? And so he did that little resource, performance monitor resource. And uh, now, 
after you have that, you can go to GProf and other tools and uh, use that resource to get the timing you want and the counters and all the other stuff. So that's the very next step. Now that came in like last week, just before the show. So I don't know what's happened since. Who's got GProf working again or not? Uh, I don't know who's familiar with GProf around here. Anybody else? It's a GNU for profiler. And so you, you, you compile your code with GProf support, and you run it, and it'll give you a count of like how many times this function was entered, how much time it spent in the function, and give you a huge report. And then you can fine tune things, right? So that's a great way to find your hotspots in your code. Great way to find hotspots. Um, I guess my only uh, criticism of it is when your program gets too big, it doesn't really help you anymore. There's too much output. So you need something even better, right? But anyway, it's a great way for medium, smallish programs, but uh, not fantastic for large things, really big things. No, it's just not good enough to go another step. <laughs> so that's good news. Uh, oh, and of course, the, the, the team, I wanted to mention the team grew again. So we have all these people, and none of them can figure out what this problem is. <laughs> no, I'm just picking up. <laughs> Only Thomas and I have dug deep into it. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few people, uh, and they all have they all bring something to the team. I must say, some some of them commentary, some of them code, some of them wisdom, some of them testing. <coughs> yeah, whether they worked on this piece or that piece. And uh, it's uh, it's been interesting. It's been interesting. So uh, I want to maybe open it to questions before I boot up the multi-core and show you how well it runs or doesn't. <laughs> Any uh, questions? I've got a question on my own slide. Chris from our team did some work on the GProf as well. Maybe we bring the data together. Oh yeah. More yeah, yeah. I guess there's another uh, another guy's working on profilers. Yeah, call up uh, Matthias because he he's got it running. And uh, oh, uh, I, I guess I, I'll have to throw it back to the uh, the boss again. When are we gonna release that boss, <laughs> Trevor? <laughs> we'll talk about it later. We're gonna talk about it later. There you go. <laughs> the pressure is on because. The performance resource, like I said, is in the kernel. You can't just take a file and give it to somebody, right? So we have to release the kernel as a package. So we'll have to figure out how to get that out. Yeah. But it, it, would you release just the kernel, or do you have to release the entire thing structure? No, just the kernel. We don't have to release anything else. Um, could. We That's could. We yeah. could. Well, yeah, we could. We you could. need all the dependencies. No, just the kernel. Mm -hmm. The kernel's the, the dependency. Right? Everything else is dependent. What? Yeah. Well, no, to the elf library. That's what I was about to say. Depending on what the last public kernel was, you may need yeah. to release uh, elf library. Yeah. Uh, oh, elf library. There were some changes a little while back. No, yeah. It says an yeah. elf, elf 51. The elf library is a different problem set tomorrow. <laughs> During <laughs> anyways. The entire, the entire <laughs> problem set. Because you don't need that. That elf, unless you're running multi-core kernel, which I'm not going to give you. Oh, okay. So uh, don't worry about it. Yeah. But <laughs> on the other hand, there's been some massive changes to elf library. Quite a few nice ones. Massive fixes. changes and a lot of great fixes and a lot of shared object fixes, the constructor, destructor fixes. Mm -hmm. That is certain Amiga Labs guys might be interested in. <laughs> talk to the boss. Yeah. So I'll have to talk to the boss. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> so, so in theory. Could you release the ELF library and kernel like right now? Could you do it? I, I wouldn't want to release the, there. the kernel for the X5000 the way it is because we put some experimental stuff in there. Well, you can pull back to right now. Seven. I would take those experimental features. They're just compile time features. Yeah. So I compile, take them out, <coughs> the yeah. dash D, and uh, compile it new. You give it, a, you give it a little test, like a functional test, maybe a week, and then out you go. Because we've been running that forever. Yeah. Right. It, it's, it's, I, I wouldn't have any problem uh, taking those experimental features out, shipping all the kernels to all the platforms, 
throw in the Elf library, and then people can move forward. And, yeah. Yeah. Everyone would love that. Yeah. What, what are the platforms? All of them. All of them. All the legal ones. ones. Yep. Okay. <coughs> Six one thousand. Yep. Okay. Well, I, I think the question might be for these changes: Elf library, not for multi-core, but the Elf library improvements would be everybody. Everybody. The kernel we're talking on it though, that yeah. wouldn't hit Sam, would it? Yep. Because it, well, it wouldn't have the performance user requirement. But it, it will have updated kernel. It would have an updated kernel with the, with all sorts of bug fixes but, that we yeah. had along the way. Yeah. yeah. So it would get a little, yeah. little bit of fixing too. Yeah. Not as much as the other platforms. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, the chat is asking for uh, ELF, so that we can use spotless. Yep. Give ELF the tools and let them use spotless. Let them use spotless. Let the people <coughs> use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let the people go. Come on, Trevor. Okay. Come we, on. Then we have a better <laughs> to apologize and ask for permission. Not the boss is actually. Um, no, 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 wait, <laughs> is Trevor here? I, I have managed to stay in, in the good category for a while. I don't want to go to the bad category. <laughs> Let's fire this up. Let's see some smoke. Okay, you want to see smoke? I'll okay, give you smoke. <laughs> I'll give you smoke. Hey, there it is. There it is. Uh, it's not enough to see it. Hold on here. Me? Me and the having to reset the thing. There we go. Oh, it's going to reset. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the PC. Now switch to the Amiga. Okay, Amiga. There I am. There I am. Okay, I got a shell. Give me a shell. Oh, that's better. Watch it. Turn on the second hand and run the multi core kernel and just watch it die. <laughs> it's sad, but. <laughs> so, I could, so this is the. Uh, what kernel is this one? Uh, let's see. It's been a while. Uh, 53. So, this is ancient history. Just way back. I think I recommended running 57. That's not public. No, but that's what we should be. The team should be running. <laughs> it's not the public. Uh, who? What's in the public land? I don't know what version that is. Fifty-four. Fifty-four. Something. Thirty-three. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> I think it's thirty-three actually. Three. I think so. Wow, we'd be busy. Okay. Are you in the thirties? Yeah. Wow. Oh, Why do you think people are pissed off? I don't know. I thought they didn't like me. I, I don't know why people are pissed off. I thought they didn't like me. I, no, I, 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 you're Canadian. Everyone loves Canadians. Oh. <laughs> no, that was him rebooting it. <laughs> uh, this, that's the latest you boot, of course. <clears throat> it's fairly quick. Okay. So. I have a few kernels. I don't know about you, but I like a lot of kernels. Um, <laughs> normal people, I suppose, have one or two. I don't know. But uh, I have what I call Edge, which is like dangerous, but running. Alpha, which is less dangerous. Uh, Multicore, very dangerous. And then Beta, which is that yeah, stable. And then Final Edition, that's what you, Joe Public, has. So, uh, I kind of have these different levels of danger, <laughs> depending on my mood. <laughs> danger, danger. And what you can do is you can put your kernel files in subdirectories. So, I don't know, <coughs> users at home, you have a whole uh, directory full of files, right? Well, you can make a directory called alpha, beta, whatever you like, edge, like I need, right? And then you put just the kernel file in there, then you change your kick layout and add a new one, and the only line you change is the one line that loads the kernel. And then it will grab the kernel, everything else stays the same, right? And that's how you can test different combinations of modules when you're having troubles at this low, low level, right? Steve, what happens when uh, you load the kernel and you know, change the vault, you've edited your kickstart there? 
and it loads and it loads. So what it goes and it goes all over. What, what do you do when, when it when it uh, yeah, loading? Exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I create these multiple kick layouts. Yeah. So that I can pick any one, and I know I don't touch the final edition ever. <coughs> I know that I can always get back to that, and it'll always run. I don't touch those that kernel file ever. But doesn't it automatically pick up the kernel that you lost? No, he's saying he's creating multiple configurations in the kick layout. Yeah, so it's yeah, before the kernel runs. Before the kernel runs. Oh, before the kernel runs. Before yeah, yeah. So this uh, is a new one, right? Or the loop loader, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 that's the trick. Yeah. That's the trick. It's before the kernel, yeah. so that you always have a base that you know runs. But then, do you yeah. put all of the final edition kickstart files in the, the final edition direct subdirectory? And then you have I, the I'm out beta directory with all the beta <laughs> kickstart. I'm not that clean. I don't put all the files in subdirectory. Well, so but how do you keep the, <laughs> I should. the final edition separated from the beta from the... I'm lazy. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> how, do you, how do you keep them from mixing? He doesn't. I don't. I'm lazy. <laughs> so basically, his final edition has all the other updated components except yeah. for the kernel. Sometimes. Yeah, well, there's but a few. Yeah, like, there, like I'll put a different DOS in there. I'll put a different yeah. ELF in there. In that directory. In, in the directory. directory. In the subdirectory. And I'll just point at them, right? Okay, so you only have the things that change yes. in the subdirectories. Yes, yes. Now I can only do this with kick layout files. Right. With the workbench, I don't touch anything. So that could be good and bad because usually it's bad because I'll have some annoying tester like Tom Cruise over here that would complain because <laughs> you, you don't even have the right version of anything. I'm getting this problem. I said, works for me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I always say. Works for me. Works for me. <laughs> now, we know, my now we know why. <laughs> now you know why. I'm lazy. <laughs> but I seriously got to fix this. <laughs> Do you have what's called popcorn, but is it kernel you expect to Yes. Oh yeah, it's the multi-core. <laughs> so I got two versions of multi-core. I got one that's uh, with debug and one without. The one without's more exciting. <laughs> more, more popcorn. <laughs> more exciting. Ah! Oh. <laughs> you know what the layers see? Because it runs for like an hour. <laughs> See? Well, there, it works fine, right? Let's ship it. <laughs> well, Can you run to oh, the uh oh, uh oh, uh oh, I was just about to tap something. <laughs> That's how much time I got. <laughs> Is that what you're referring to as the repo problem? It was a good run. Is that the repo problem yeah. you're talking about? Yeah, it goes back to you. Well, from a hardware perspective, that takes ages to get to that point. So there's, a, there's clearly an event somewhere. The, this thing has uh, trace facilities, right? <laughs> it's long and complicated. I will talk to you. I will talk to you later about trace facilities because maybe you know something I don't, and I, I would appreciate to know this. Because, <laughs> like I said, we, we slap a JTAG on there and it can't catch it. Well, no, because it's the, yeah. the underlying interface is, is basically I squared C. It's really slow. So if you're trying to are you trying to capture like an instruction string or something? I don't know what I'm catching. They have, they have no idea what's going on. They don't know why it crashed. It, and it's the uh, MCC will like literally power push it. Yep. I, I don't see reboots. I see. Yeah. I see it's very or, interesting. I see yeah, a physical problem. A message out from <laughs> the, M, the MMC, whatever the MCC, and then it turns it off. Like yeah. I'm turning off. Yeah. Now. Sometimes yeah. I can power off the machine just by opening clock. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, with the message. It's kind of like, it powers <laughs> off. Okay. And I'm like, how can a CPU power off the whole machine? Um, we can send a, uh, a ACPI power event to microcontroller. Yeah. Yeah, we, we should talk. Which is very <laughs> so, but is there anywhere in the kernel where that, that piece of code is? Oh know. yeah, yeah. We we looked, we looked. Don't worry. Yeah. I would assume so. No, there is, there is, there's there's a line in there that that turns off the machine. It's a little GPIO thing. We just go click, turns off the machine, right? So the very first thought, of course, Thomas, Thomas had. I meant it up. I mean, that, like, this, this is like, 
eight months ago. Like well, you're just know. catching up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but like, is there some you know random jump that it's making to that line? Exactly. Right. Exactly. You're just catching up. It's okay. <laughs> we we went through all of that garbage. Um, Wait, okay, you yeah. moved the line. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Change it. Put in a, a random delay. Something. Just right. random delay. Random delay. I love that approach. Just take your shotgun. Delay. <laughs> There's always the printf statement. Well, that's, that's the same as delay. So I'll load up the debug one. It may or may not run longer. I've got three minutes. I'm oh, wow. Sometimes you can get minutes. <laughs> Save off there. You go. <laughs> and you wonder why I don't really care what the workbench files are? <laughs> it's more like watching popcorn. You just have to stare at it until it's done. Now the, the load is extremely slower because oh, no, I have a debug level five normally. I never go lower than five usually because um, it's got the good juicy stuff in it for a debug output. Right. I even I even gone to some code where uh, where there was uh, swear words. So I know I'm getting closer. <laughs> <laughs> You know, I like that when you go through someone else's code, go up and they're like, beeping, beeping, ding dong, beeping, work. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it's like, it's like when they're reading it, it's like, ah. <laughs> Why is that in there? <laughs> Checked in in 2006. <laughs> Wait, it just rebooted. Oh, see, it didn't even get to the work. I know, it didn't. It just rebooted. Right. And the, you know what's really fun, though? Sometimes it does. Sometimes it does. That's another weird problem. <laughs> Six key? Because I like to press buttons. <laughs> <laughs> Even slowly. No, actually, it, it stops the countdown in case I slip. Feature. I have a reason. <laughs> you know how many times I've slipped and picked the wrong one? Well, how many times do you get distracted, remove the machine, and then turn back and it's already? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You turn your head. What? <laughs> Wait, I'm not a reboot. I don't think there's a way to actually pause there you go. to stop it. See, it worked this time. It yeah. worked this time. This is the same one. Wait, did you do debug? Yeah, this yeah. is multi core debug. There oh, goes. shit. No, I didn't get my shot. <laughs> <laughs> You're not, that machine is not running all the time. Sometimes. But then, uh, this is like. I don't know if they Wait, released okay. this one. Oh, you guys compare what, what you guys had in the 61. 61. 61. Yeah, I did that. Have you compared what's in everybody's machines to see? Oh, it doesn't matter. It's the kernel. No, it means like drivers. Right. What what boards do you have in there? Like, but for it, example, it is it just like some combination? But yeah, but why is it three minutes for him and you haven't gotten a second? Because I, I do a different system partition. <laughs> so it's literally just one. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. And it runs about three minutes. See, now I got a vote. I got a final edition. And you've got you've got a uh, Eddie Doc, which is timer device. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, that's the thing. You're you're actually getting the uh, full workbench. And mine right. plays the uh, the audio jingle too, right? And all that stuff. Yeah. So I got all sorts of firing up mean of things it. going on. But I wanted the mean things in case I could get a crash, because I would kill for a crash report that shows that reset. That's too early. I would kill. Just. <laughs> Because that's the problem. We don't get like the we don't catch an exception. We got exception catchers all over the place waiting for exception. Can't catch it. So, it's clear or not. No, it just bypasses everything. Dunk. <laughs> anyway, this is the latest U boot. Um, it's interesting. I don't know. I fixed up a few things on the menus. And, you Did know, you do it, anything with the latest boot? Made it prettier. Which one? The Linus boot, did you do anything with that to see? Uh, no, oh, I didn't touch it. The menu? No, yeah. I didn't touch that. Boot options, like these little menu things. Uh, you know, the last thing I got to do is just uh, set the environment variables for the tasks for these buttons. Like when you do boot for mass storage, it should do a USB reset and then boot A for whatever it is. Yeah. Right? So I just got to put that in the background. Well, that's but that's boring. So I didn't do it yet. <laughs> yeah, I have to do it myself. Terrible. Yeah, the boss, actually, I, I'll fix that tomorrow. <laughs> the boss said. Uh, <laughs> See, you, 
you see this what is the, the tomorrow? This is the, the, <laughs> the, uh, yeah, right. GUI that uh, was invented. Of course, there, you get the command line. Yeah. 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 Good day. Obviously, we're written by Canadian. Good day. I should put EH. I could change that to put good EH. <laughs>
That's a voter of a problem. <laughs> it's not mine. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry, does this happen with Linux as well? No. No, Linux does not have this one. No. No, it's unique to our implementation of the There's something we're doing that really, really hates. So it's Steve's fault is what I'm saying. So we all agree? It's Steve's fault? Yeah. Do we all agree? We have consensus? No. Hands up, Steve's fault. We don't have consensus. Do they work happens on the 20 and the 40? I don't know. I don't have a 40. I'm not Thomas that rich. Thomas is using a 40. <laughs> so yes. Thomas got the 40. Uh, it's not running, I don't think. Is it? That's what he uses. I thought I thought he uses a 20. No, he says he's developed on a 40. Oh, okay. I so that's what I know. <laughs> <coughs> I, I, it wouldn't matter how many cores you have. <laughs> he's still run uh, he's still running the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, had a, I really had a hunch it was interrupts. I went through that interrupt setup stuff. Pretty fine tooth comb. I found one, one issue, but Have it was. You tested on the X1000 to see if there's a different behavior. No, uh, they can't. Don't bother to write for the X1000. It's did, a, did, we, <laughs> did we not see that slide? <laughs> see, this not, this they is don't what care happens. about the X1000 users. This is called the drive sundown. Oh. Insanity. See, this, this is what happens. <laughs> you, you always get somebody in the room goes, well, just try it on. Yeah, well, to get it to just try it on, it takes three months. So, uh, yeah, but you were working on this for eight. <laughs> so you, 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 I know, you could have done five months ago. We have one person going like this to the other machine, <laughs> and it may not work either. Now you've got two non working machines. <laughs> You just wasted three months. So, no. <laughs> that, it, we know it's not hardware, so uh, why not just keep digging until you find it, right? That's, uh, that's, what, that, that's the approach we're taking. Yeah. It, it will come. It will come. Now that I've got uh, LD on it, uh, I'll trade you, I'll trade you the uh, pausing problem for uh, this. Um, on the 1222. Yeah, because you know, I'll be honest with you. The, the first theory that I had was, all right, go take a look. No, no seriously. Go, go take a look at the um, actual method for uh, communication with the NMC via the local bus. What instructions are writing? What registers? Come up with the union of that. Then take the instructions that theoretically should be involved. Set those up as triggers for your core traces so that it only captures those instructions when it happens along with the time of the field. Not, oh yeah, okay. So I, I understand you, what you're saying. That's this? scary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just capture just capture those instructions being issued. Yeah. The theory you should the the, the last with the last yeah. one. And we need to set up the trigger such that when it's writing, if, if the only method that you're doing is actually to write that particular pin, we could set the masks up in such a way to only capture on that one event. And I would prove that that's what's actually happening. As opposed to... Well, you're assuming it's coming out. What if it's something on the board monitor? The battery sort of something I don't board. know, because I don't know the board design, and I don't know the trigger. Right? I need to I need to take, I need to see, yeah. I don't know what the MMC is. Yeah, yeah. So I need to look at a product sheet to begin with. But, but yeah, that, I mean, that would be basically the, the but yeah, yeah, the assumption is that it is coming from processor. Because it's either coming from the processor or somebody yeah. has set up something on the board incorrectly. Yeah. That seems unlikely because you guys aren't doing board setup in the kernel, are you? Yeah. No, it's it's done. You're doing that. Right. Okay. And, so and then Linux doesn't have that. So no, I no, no, no. So my the first area to eliminate would be that there's there's actually some the rogue instruction that's getting sent at some point for some particular reason that's triggering the event. Once you eliminate that, then you can both other theories, but that's an easy one to do if you have the ability to dump out the trace rates. So that's a. Uh, if you don't have an easy ability to dump out the trace rates, I'll, I'll, I'll dump this down for the audience. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're going to take Ryan's idea of outputting a character at the function level. Kind of. Take it down a notch and put in the instruction uh, catches. We're going to catch instructions. There you go. That's right. We're going to dump it. We're going to take it right down there. Damn Very right. good. Way down there. That's what I'm hearing. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. 
I mean, that would seem to be the one logical thing to do. The other thing also, that's a good idea. Now, I, and now, the other thing also is, is we, I don't know what type of debugging, de debugging interfaces that the MMC has, because well, it may be possible to. Let's the data sheet, shall we? <laughs> no, because it's probably so darn slow that there probably is an I2C uh, I interface to it, and we yeah. can actually monitor what it's receiving. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're right. Maybe. You're right. I don't know. I have no idea how those, I don't know. I, that was the, uh, when I was going through the manual, uh, I noticed uh, Thomas had triggered the debug facilities on the chip too at one point, but it was it's currently disabled. So I could tell there was something going on there. I haven't asked him about it yet, uh, what he was up to. But uh, I, I went and looked at the debug facilities, and holy cow, this thing's got a lot of crazy stuff in it. it it's does. got a whole big chunk. It, it's got its own interrupt. It's got. It's like a little computer inside of a computer. Yeah, but those traces are always capturing if you don't have an actual setup, and it's useless because by the, by the time you pull out whatever that tiny snapshot is in there, mm -hmm. you can pass the error so like ages ago. It's like a ring buffer that's this big. That's right. That's right. Yeah, there's only so many, there's only so many <laughs> entries in there. There's only so many yeah, entries in there. Yeah, yeah. And it's not great. So that's why the trigger setup is so critical. You need that trigger. Yeah. So you can yeah. set the trigger in the Just like a scope. section of the chip to pick only the ones you want. That's right. Okay. Yeah, and you can even go further than that because there's usually general task yeah. bits. So we can select the opcode, we can select condition flags, we can select tons of stuff, and then it'll only capture on that point. And you can even set it up so that it'll it'll capture a subset of what you want, and then there's another subset of things where you capture it, and then it freezes, so it no longer captures after that. No. And that way you can kind of whittle things down. There's all sorts of cool things. So the only thing I would say, tell me, is all you have to do is change the B to I. <laughs> I, was just, I was just thinking that myself. Steve knows what I'm talking about. Right? He's done. Uh, oh, He's oh, sitting in front of the computer with the fire. All right, Mr. Solid. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, uh, uh, it's it's <laughs> see, it's only two o'clock. Yeah. 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 You don't need to give the rest of your presentation. Well, well, I don't have any. Start coding. Yeah. Start coding. We're watching. Oh. oh, that's not pressure at all. And, the, and, and, <laughs> and it's, you know, you're right in, in Pacific time. You're already yeah, 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 yeah. You've got an hour still yeah, in your hour. Don't worry about it. Just start going. Monkey. Monkey, jump. There it is. Oh, Cereal. <laughs> Cereal. The bugger. Yeah. <laughs> I brought my, uh, I have a, <laughs> hey Steve, I brought my cable so you can talk to the MMC. Did you like that? Did you hear that? I heard that. Yeah, no, I, I brought it, and you know what? Through the magic of what George called Docker, you can actually compile right here, right now. <laughs> Doesn't sound like there are any excuses left. Oh, there. that's the next thing. So, so would, you, would you encourage more beta testers? Would you open beta testing more people? Well, I, I keep it the small team first, get it stable, like stable-ish, so that, because uh, we have that small multi-core team now, like three, four people, right? Let's, I would ask those people, do you think we can give it to the beta testers now? I think that's, that would be my approach, because they, they know the most. OS4 beta testers? Or yeah, the OS4 start OS4 beta testers, because uh, you need all these files, and most of them are owned by the so, um That's the way it goes. So <laughs> you have to stick with the OS4 beta testers. Um, but then I would want to extend it to uh, like the EON beta testers. That's what I want to do. But then I run into lawyer problems. So I just felt like a preview release. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right and I'm like, well, if I'm going to go through that hassle, why not just release it? You know, it's like <laughs> well, you could release it with a Kickstarter kick layout and, and have do a special kick layout. Yeah, 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 so that everybody can put it on their machines. We could do a, 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 a preview multi core release to the general public. Yeah. And what the default is. Normal update to right. da, 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 da. And if you can't figure out how to change your Ubuntu variables, variables to get the picker, then you're not allowed to play with it. I like that. I like the idea. Yeah. If you <laughs> don't know enough to change your kick layout, you're not invited. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. That's fair. That's, That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. yeah. It, because you're just gonna hurt it, hurt yourself and yeah. someone else. Then <laughs> the next year of DevCon, they'll be asking you to put those instructions on the wiki. <laughs> Well, you know, whenever you do that in Amiga land, when you try to make something exclusive, some helpful person will make a script, 
or, or, or something to work around it. <laughs> Always, right? That's the beauty of Amiga Land is someone will make it easy for the novice. And then they will shoot their foot off. <laughs> and that's how it goes in Amiga Land, right? So, like, I, I remember uh, the 3000, they, you had to solder on in 6 from A to B. There's helpful tutorials on the internet. <laughs> That you could you could just see people like trying to take their hair dryer. I'll get it. <laughs> get this desoldered and put that on there. <laughs> Another question that people may already know in the room, but I don't. Um, that the way all the 1222 board is, is moving forward. It's getting getting close. Uh, well, put this way. I just made the final payment yesterday. So. Final, yeah, yeah, final payment. Yeah. Yesterday. I got the bill in on the day before, the oh. bill was lying, so I did the bank transfer okay. to find the 50%, okay. so, so it's the, been paid. Oh, we talking about so the board is paid for? Yeah. So as far as, so we as, have as, have as, the, as far as the OS, there's no shit on the board right now. Why did you say or? No, this is, this is all X5000. Okay. Yeah. But you that, that, add. I think that means that we have to buy Trevor lunch. Okay. Uh, we he's did. Broke. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody give that man something. Because <laughs> come on. That's what we call fine. I thought there was a case full of boards that we were going to buy off of him. Well, yeah, but right now, today, come on. <laughs> There's a small gap in the time. <laughs> Cash flow. <laughs> See, because yeah, they, like Kevin's mentioning, there's this thing called cash flow. Okay, that money's gone. Now, how long before the boards are being sold and the money starts to come back? <laughs> That's a lot of lunches. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what message? Don't worry. <laughs> That's phenomenal. That's phenomenal. All right. Well, there you go. And I still see comments on the web saying it's made for it. <laughs> Oh, is it? Yeah. I don't uh, know. Don't Looks think. real to me. <laughs> what do you mean? He just wrote a program that turns off the computer. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I can make this thing crash anytime I want. Sort of want. Sort of want. Actually, I can't control the timing, but I can get close. <laughs> but isn't this one right here? Yeah. That's, that's, well, yeah, this picture of those. Well, the, the 1222 is vapor, and yeah, everything. Yeah. Even though it's very Whatever. <laughs> we had a version 1.3 board at Amiga Germany. It was running, running the uh, uh, Google Cloud PC's latest uh, hurricane. Yeah, yeah, actually, uh, I don't know if people out there know that the, it's, the board name was Tabor 1.3. Yeah. 1.3. That's it. it's, no, it's Tabor's gone. It's, but it's A1200 plus. Yeah, no, but, but the product name is A1222 plus. plus. Yeah, the version 1.3. Oh, plus. Well, what's, the, what's the plus? And what's the version on the plus? Well, what, what oh, we're going to use the same number for the well, plus. Well, the last version 1.1. Okay, so we're going to skip two, go to three. Okay, so it's A1222 plus version 1.3. Even though well, you don't need the version because there's no, four. No, we don't. It's like A1222 plus. The plus is the version. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, it's a plus. It's stuff like that. I don't like product names with plus on it anymore. No. I'm getting jaded. <laughs> well, we already have Amiga One in the enterprise space. That's back right now. So, like all the big enterprise companies are naming their software like yes. Name One, oh, like Cisco okay. One. Oh yeah. And Where is that one? What is that? Okay. Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. One one is back. Back. Yeah. One yeah. Yeah. One is back. One is back. We're, I we're that way too. ahead of that. I noticed that too. We're way ahead. We're like ten years ahead of that. Yeah. We're yeah. leading back. Right? See, we're leading for one. That's because we never got off of one. <laughs> They well, laughed. Well, they laughed no, us. Well, no, to stay ahead, we've got to start saying number yeah. two. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we'll laugh. Laugh. <laughs> number uh, two. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think we could probably shut down the uh, transmission now. Yeah. I, I, if oh, there's no more questions. Oh, yeah, he's got coding work to do. Yeah, he's got coding work to do.